bless God for you and thank you for joining us this morning. It's still morning, got five more minutes before noon, and so we thank you. Uh, for those who don't know me, I am Vernon Hill Sr. They call me uh, OG, the teaching pastor here at the Transformation Christian Fellowship Church. Uh, it is certainly an honor and a privilege to join you today. Uh, standing in for Pastor B, Pastor Brandon. He is still celebrating his nuptials. And so I certainly honor him, our man of God, and to our now leading lady, uh, Lady O. Uh, we bless God for her as well, uh, my daughter in love. And so uh, we're just grateful to God for them and for uh, the privilege to be able to share uh, here at Transformation. I certainly honor uh, our executive pastor, Pastor Dominique, and uh, what a great job he did on last week. So uh, just throw some 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 real hands claps together, some thumbs up for, for Pastor Dom in the chat, just to, just to appreciate him for the work that he did on last week. Such a great job, such a great, you fine young man. And so uh, we're grateful to him, to all the elders here at TCF, to Elder Brittany and to Elder Vernon and to Elder Boomy, all of the elders here at TCF. Thank God for you as well. Uh, we bless God for all of you today. Uh, certainly I, I give honor to uh, my leading lady, Sister Aretha, the mama of the house. And so uh, we bless God for her. And a special shout out to some family members of mine at First Emmanuel uh, Church who's joining us today on the live broadcast. So we certainly bless God for you uh, for, for joining us today with the broadcast. And so I'm not going to prolong this. I'm going to get into the message for today. Um, I only have but so much time. And I want to try to get as much of it done as possible. Amen. Uh, give me some amens back here in the in the type so I can know that you're with me. All right. All right. Because I don't want uh, Elder Vernon to just cut me off. Amen. <laughs> All righty. Good to see everybody on the chat this morning. So we've been in the midst of a series, uh, the Kingdom is Like series. And in the Kingdom is Like series, um, we're in Matthew chapter 13. And if you are, um, if you have your Bible, if you have your device uh, with a Bible app, uh, we're gonna go, we're gonna be going to Matthew 13. Uh, we're gonna be starting with, uh, verse 45. I'm going to get there in a minute, but let me just kind of uh, do some groundwork here uh, about the series because we've been in a series for now a couple of weeks now that Pastor Brandon started talking about the kingdom to give information uh, concerning the kingdom. And we've been um, following uh, going through chapter 13 in Matthew, um, listening and learning from the master teacher himself, Jesus the Christ. And as Jesus goes through uh, Matthew 13, he gives parables and we talked about, uh, kind of gave some definitions of parables and we know that par parables are, are practical stories that have a spiritual meaning there. Uh, parables are taken from natural things, uh, familiar things uh, during that time. and. Uh, that the audience was familiar with and Jesus would share with them a spiritual truth tied into the story. And so uh, our God is a great teacher because he, uh, he understood that uh, storytelling was something that they did in those days and storytelling was very effective way of teaching uh, to help people remember uh, the, uh, a particular truth. Uh, however, the truth of the parables that Jesus taught um, was only allowed to really be uh, received by those who were willing to 
uh, put their trust and faith in him. It, it, there, there was a very distinctive time. This was a really distinctive time for Jesus at this particular moment because uh, he began to start talking. And while he talked in parables prior, uh, they were parables that were very plainly understood. But then he switched uh, right around here and he began to speak in parables that uh, if you weren't privy to the presence, his presence, uh, if he wasn't privy to his presence and, uh, and, and had the opportunity to be with him while he was explaining the parable, uh, you weren't going to get or grasp the meaning uh, only because it was a fulfillment of what Isaiah had already, uh, the prophet had already spoken that in seeing, uh, people would see but not see. They would hear but not yet hear uh, because if they ever saw with their eyes and heard with their ears, then they would be healed. And so uh, Jesus did uh, uh, began to fulfill that prophecy right about here when he begins to speak uh, concerning the kingdom. And he gives these comparisons uh, of the kingdom through these several uh, parables that he begins to speak. Uh, he, he gives us the, the parable of the sower. He gives us the parable of the wheat and the tare. He gives us the parable of the mustard seed. Uh, he gives us the parable of, of the leaven, and he gives us the parable of the hidden treasure. And so it's my assignment today and with the strength of God to uh, work on the parable of the merchant and the priceless pearl. The merchant and the priceless pearl. Uh, I'm going to be reading, uh, I'm going to go to Matthew, right where I told you, Matthew uh, chapter 13, verse 45 and 46, just those two verses, um, and it reads as this. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls. And upon finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and brought it. I'll read it one more time. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls. And upon finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had, and he brought it. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be talking about, we're going to be continuing this series on the kingdom is like. The kingdom is like. Um, let, let me start by, by let, let me start here. Uh, Jesus' main theme was the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. His, his, his primary purpose uh, and his primary teaching was the kingdom of God is at hand. That, that's what his primary teaching was. When he, when he started off the ministry, he, he began and he, and he, and he started uh, uh, preaching and teaching the kingdom. Uh, Mark 1, Mark 1, verses 14 through 15 says, Now after John had been taken into custody, Jesus came unto Galilee, preaching the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And so Jesus started his ministry preaching the kingdom, the, the kingdom of God. And so we have already uh, have established in the series that the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is used synonymously uh, th and, and throughout, the, throughout the New Testament. And... Um, we, we, we know that, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to, I could go there, but I'm not going to go there. Uh, you know, Matthew used more of the kingdom of heaven. The, the other writers use more of the kingdom of God. 
And because Matthew writes more so primarily to the Jews, uh, it's thought that, you know, because the Jews uh, reverenced God to the point that they didn't even want to say his name, they didn't even say his name, uh, it's thought that Matthew used more so the kingdom of heaven instead of the kingdom of God, whereas the other writers used the kingdom of God uh, because it was more readily understood to the audiences that they were uh, writing to. But that's neither here nor there at this particular point because the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is all the same. Yeah. All right? And so um, it, it's important to know that, that Jesus preached the kingdom. Uh, Luke 4, 43, uh, it says, but he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. He, he, Jesus says, he, he says, and, and you know, this, the, and that Luke passage right there, uh, Jesus is in Capernaum and he's doing some healings and he's doing some great things and miracles in their midst. And the people tried to restrain him and tried to keep him there. But Jesus said, no, I got to go because I got to, I have to, it's my purpose to preach the kingdom in other cities. It, it, it's Jesus' purpose. One of the, the reasons why he was sent was to preach the kingdom of God. So let me go back in a little bit, and I want to talk because the kingdom of God uh, and the kingdom of heaven wasn't so much a term that was understood in, or, or even used in the Old Testament, but we understand and know that the kingdom was uh, ever present throughout the Old Testament, uh, and uh, while those particular phrases were not used, the Bible has always taught that God God will one day set up his physical kingdom here on earth. We know that. We, we know that through the, through the scripture uh, that not only that, 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 first of all, that God uh, uh, is ruler over all. He created all. And, and because of that, he, he is yet still in control. He's yet still have all authority and, and he's always had a kingdom. He's God has always had a kingdom. God's kingdom is eternal. He, 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 he before there was an earth, God had a kingdom because he was the king and every king has a kingdom. Amen. Every, every king has a kingdom. Uh, let, let's go back and look at some scripture real quick. Uh, of Psalm 22 Starting at verse 27, it says, all the end of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations will worship before you. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he rules over every nation. That, that's an Old Testament passage. I'm, I'm gonna go, that's, that's one Old Testament passage. There's some more. Let me give you this one right here, Psalm uh, 145. Uh, starting at verse 10, all of your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and your godly ones shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power to make known to the sons of men your mighty acts and the glory of the majesty of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. I'm going to give you one more uh, Old Testament passage just to kind of uh, uh, let us know. I'm just setting the foundation here to kind of let us know that the kingdom, the concept of the kingdom is, is not just uh, started in the New Testament, but it was always there in the Old. Uh, Daniel 2, uh, 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 chapter 2, verse 44 says, in the days of the kings, of, in the days of those kings, God of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed and that kingdom will not be left to another to another people it will crush and put an end to all these kingdoms but it will itself endure forever so i wanted to establish i want to establish here that there has always been uh and there's always uh have been 
a, a, a concept, an understanding uh, of the kingdom of God, that God has a kingdom and that there is a, a kingdom to come. There is a kingdom to come that, that was established already in the Old Testament. Uh, the Old Testament is all prophets have spoken of the kingdom that was to come. Uh, that Jesus, uh, 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 that 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 Jesus picks up in the New Testament, and he starts his ministry by saying, "Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come." It's important for us to to understand the message of the kingdom, and and I think uh, to some degree we need to get back to the message of the kingdom uh, because because it, it, it because uh, Jesus really didn't come preaching the church while, while, while the church has been established but the church was established to manifest the kingdom we we as believers are to be manifesting the kingdom it's 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 we ought to be speaking the message of the kingdom that's the message that jesus spoke that that's the message that jesus spoke jesus spoke the message of the kingdom Je jesus spoke the message of the kingdom uh uh what 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 is the message of the kingdom what is the king what what is the message the the message is the good news that, that's that's what it is. The, the message is the good news. Well, what is the good news? Well, Jesus tells us in, in, in Luke chapter 4, uh, he begins, he, he, he's in the synagogue, and he tells us in Luke chapter 4, starting at verse 16, uh, and he comes to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and he was, and as was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. And the book of the prophet Isaiah had been handed to him, and he opened the book and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. For he has sent me to proclaim release of the captive, and recovery and recovery of sight to the blind to set free those who are oppressed to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord G Jesus 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 stands in the synagogue and 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 he tells them and he tells them he says look the spirit of the Lord is upon me and and I've been anointed to preach the gospel, the glad tidings to the poor. I, I, I've been, I, I've been, I've been sent to the release the captive. I, I, I've been sent to, to, to recover the, the sight of the blind, to set free all those who oppress, and to proclaim the acceptable year of our Lord. That's the good news. That's, that's, that's the message of the kingdom. The message of the kingdom is, is the salvation that Jesus brings. It's the salvation that Jesus brings. It's, it's, the, it's, 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 it's the good news to the poor that you don't have to be poor no more. It, 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 it's, the, it's the release of the captive that, that those who have been captive, they can be free. Uh, it's those who have been blind, not just physically blind, but mostly spiritually blind. You can now recover your sight. It's those who have been oppressed. You can now be freed from oppression. It's the message of the kingdom, and it's the acceptable year. It's the acceptable season of our Lord. That, that's the message of the kingdom. It, 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 the message of this kingdom is, is, is the salvation message. It, it is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes, that is the good news. But in the good news there, there in, in, that, in that gospel message of salvation, in that gospel message of the death, the burial, and the resurrection, it, it, in that, all of that was to, to, to gain our redemption. It's to restore us back to where we once were before Adam fell. 
That, that's, what, that's what the gospel is. That's what the gospel is. That's what the message of the kingdom is all about. The message of the kingdom is that, that, that God is at hand to set free, to restore, to renew, to redeem the people of God. That, that's, that's, what, that's where we are. That, that, that's where we are. And, and so Jesus came preaching that message. And not only did he uh, preach that message, but he, he authorized and he commanded his disciples to preach the same message. Uh, I'm not going to read this scripture, but if you look at uh, 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 Luke, let me, let me find this one real quick. I got it in my notes here. But but he commanded, let me go through, I got to find this scripture. I'll find it, I'll find it, I'll find it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to see. There we go. Matthew 10. Five through seven, Matthew ten five through seven. He 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 sends he commissions the twelve to go out. He he commissioned the twelve to go out, and and in his commission to the twelve, he tells them to preach the kingdom. Uh, Luke ten nine. He commissions the seventy to go out, and in his commission of the seventy to go out, he teach he tells them to preach and manifest the power of the kingdom. That, that's what he does. He, he, he tells them, he tells his disciples to preach and manifest the power of the kingdom. Well, how is the power of the kingdom manifested? Well, through, the power of the kingdom was manifested through the healing, through, 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 through the miracles, through, through, through the signs and through the wonders that was performed by the disciples that confirmed the power of God, the kingdom of God, was now at hand. And so it's important for us to understand the kingdom message. It's, it's important for us to operate in the authority and the power that the kingdom, uh, uh, that, the, that the kingdom authority that Jesus Christ has given his disciples to operate in. What, what does it mean that the kingdom of God is at hand? It, it means, it simply means that the power and the authority of the kingdom of God is now available. It's, it's now manifested in your midst. The, the, the awesome creator of the universe, the, the one who, who, who created all things is now in the midst of his people and he's now capable of, of, of giving uh, to uh, the believers the authority and the, equipping them with the power not only to just Preach the kingdom, but to de demonstrate the power of the kingdom. So I, I said all of this to say that the kingdom message is important. The, the kingdom message is important. It's important for us to understand the message of the kingdom. Let's move a little further. We're going to move a little further. And so, and so, uh, Jesus and John, in John, John 3, Jesus and John 3, uh, he, 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 he has a conversation with Nicodemus, who is one of the Jewish leaders. Uh, Nicodemus uh, comes to him by night. And, and he, Nicodemus tells him, he says, you know, uh, Rabbi, uh, uh, teacher, I, I can tell that you've been sent from God. And, and, and so Jesus, Jesus, Jesus uh, uh, tells Nicodemus, he says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so, 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 so Jesus 
comes to Nic well, Nicodemus comes to Jesus and, and he begins to, to talk to him by night. And Jesus just right away just tells Nicodemus, he says, look, uh, uh, what you got to understand is to know that uh, uh, unless you got to be born again to be a part of the kingdom of God. Nicodemus was really uh, kind of taken back by Jesus' response. He said, because how can a man uh, uh, be old and then go back into his mother's womb and be born again? And, and Je Jesus says, look, 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 what is flesh is flesh, but that is spirit is spirit. He says, marvel not that I say to you that you must be born again, Nicodemus. What you got to understand is that which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. He looked, the wind blows how it may. He says, but 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 understand, it, it, it is the power of the Holy Spirit that brings life, that a rebirth is brought, brought forth out of the power of the belief, to the power of a believer on Jesus Christ. It, 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 it's the born again experience that brings us into the kingdom of God. G Jesus, Jesus, he, 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 he's working through uh, uh, these kingdom principles and these pre kingdom concepts. Uh, here's another, here's another concept uh, of the kingdom that I want to share. Uh, it, it, and, and this, this, this one right here is so apropos for, for today in Luke chapter, uh, 12 verses 20, 29 through 32. Uh, we normally say this over in, uh, Matthew, uh, we use Matthew passage, but I like, I like Luke, right? What, what Luke is saying, because I don't know, this last verse is, is this last sentence is going to help us here. It says, and do not seek what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor have any anxiety, nor have an anxious mind. For all these things the nations of the world seek after, and your father knows that you need these things. But seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Look, it, what, what Jesus is saying here, and, and what Jesus is saying, and, and if you pull the passage of Matthew over, because I, I like it says, seek ye first, it, it, it says prioritize the kingdom first uh, uh, in the Matthew passage. But what I want to get here is that in that last sentence, it says, it is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God wants to, the Father wants to give us the kingdom. He wants to give us the authority. He wants to give us the power. He wants to give us uh, uh, all of those, all of the things that go along with uh, kingdom authority. I, and I know that's true. I know that's true because Matthew 16 uh, tells us in, in verse 18, uh, uh, when when and, and Jesus Jesus tells this to Peter, he says, "I also uh, say to you." Uh, uh, Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of H Hades uh, will not overpower it. Uh, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. It's the Father's pleasure to give us the kingdom. Jesus says, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom to bind and to loose. And, and, and whatever you declare on earth shall be bound, shall be bound. And whatever you declare on earth shall be loose, uh, will be loose. God desires to give us the kingdom. So it's important that if God wants to give it to us, uh, we got to understand what the kingdom is all about. We got to be able to know what the kingdom is like so we can properly utilize the authority that God is willingly uh, willing to give to us to operate on his behalf while we're in the earth realm. Yeah. And when we're not operating in our kingdom authority, we're living below where God desires for us to be. We're, we're living below where God desires for us to be. He wants us to have the kingdom. He wants us to have kingdom authority. He wants us to walk in it. That's what he wants. 
And so Jesus goes about in his ministry to give the people of God understanding and wisdom concerning the kingdom. And so in Matthew 13, he, he begins to give us these comparisons. And I've already named uh, the parables that he gave. And, and so I'm going to get right into the text uh, of that I'm responsible for uh, of, the, of the merchant and the great pearl. I, I want to do that. I want to do that. Let's, let's look at the text one more time. Uh, Matthew uh, 13, 45 and 20, 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking a fine pearl, and upon finding one pearl of great value, uh, he went and sold all he had and brought it. Let's look at that. Let's, let's talk about what we have there. So we have a merchant. We, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me stop here. Let me, let me go back. Rewind. We have the kingdom. We have the merchant, and we have the pearl, all right? We, we have the kingdom, we have the merchant, and we have the pearl. So I've already discussed the kingdom a little, in a, a little bit. So I want to talk about the merchant. Let, let's look at the merchant. Let's, let's look at this businessman. Let's, let's, let's look at what the scripture is saying here. Let's, let's, let's kind of go through it a little bit. So the, the merchant is seeking fine Pearls, pearls with an S. He wasn't looking for just one pearl. He was looking for pearls, plural. He, he was looking for several pearls. Note, notice that. He was seeking pearls. But the scripture says upon finding one pearl of great value, uh, one pearl of great value. This this man this man understood he understood that this one pearl of great value was of such worth. If it was of such value that what he needed to do is let go every all his other stuff just to buy this one. That 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 that's 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 what he says. That's what the that that's there. There's something in this merchant. There's something in this merchant that that helps us to see that that there, there's an intention. That there's an intention. There's that 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 that, that, that he was intentionally seeking something. That this businessman was intentionally seeking to buy pearls. It, that, that that he was he was looking for pearls he he was looking for it he and 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 all to, to to probably we could probably glean that if this person was was looking for pearls maybe he was possibly a jeweler and he, and and for uh he has to have some kind of background in jewelry uh to understand and know when he found when he saw something of great value it was of such that it was something that he just had to have and he was willing to let everything else go to grab hold of that one precious pearl. He was intent. He was intentional. He was intentional. He was intentional. He was seeking pearls. He was seeking pearls. And when he came across the one, but look at this. Not only was he intentional, but he had an urgent. There was an urgency about him. There was an urgency about him because once he found that one pearl, he didn't keep seeking for more. He immediately stopped, went and sold all he had to purchase the one. He understood the urgency of the moment that he may not get this opportunity again, that something so precious, something so valuable, something worth so much could not be, uh, you, you don't put that on hold. You don't, you don't put it uh, 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 on pause and, and, and you don't keep searching for another. When you receive, when you've gotten something of this kind of value, you take, you take advantage in the opportunity of the moment. Moment, he went right away and he purchased, he purchased the pearl yeah. after he sold all his other stuff. Look at this. So he, he was intentional. He understood the urgency of the moment. But then he sacrificed. 
he, he sacrificed. He, he, he understood, he understood to have this pearl of great value that it would cost him something. It would cost him all that he had. But, the, but what the value of the pearl was to him was so precious that all that he had did not mount to what the value of this precious pearl could afford him. Let, let's, let's understand. Let's understand what, the, what is this saying on a spiritual level? What, 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 what is this understanding on the spiritual level? What Pastor Dom talked to, talked to us on last week, and he told us that there was a man who came across a hidden treasure, and that hidden treasure uh, uh, was of such value that he hid it again, and he went and sold everything and, and bought the field that the treasure was in that 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 it tells us he this 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 uh, uh parable of the pearl and the parable of the hidden treasure can be almost preached uh uh together however there are some differences because while uh the person the man who found the hidden treasure he wasn't necessarily looking for the treasure it, it scripture says uh it, he he came across the hidden treasure but once he came across the hidden treasure he understood the value was of such that he needed to be urgent about how he goes about possessing the treasure so he went and he sold all not only that but he also sacrificed he gave everything for the treasure yeah. he gave everything for the treasure they, they, they're, they're similar in, in, in what they're doing, uh, but, 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 but what we got to understand that what Jesus' message is, is that when you hear the message of the kingdom, we ought, whether you had intentionally seeking it or if you just come across it, you have to have an urgency about receiving the message of the kingdom. There has to be an urgency. Jesus Jesus tells one fellow, comes across a fellow, uh, and, and, and he hears the message of the kingdom, and he says, uh, uh, Jesus, uh, I, I, I want to follow you. I want to follow you, but let me go back and bury my dad first. And, and Jesus says, look, look, let the dead bury the dead. You got to understand the moment that you're in. You got to understand that the, the opportunity that you have when you come across the message of the kingdom, you got to understand the urgency and you have to be willing to sacrifice all. You, ha you have to be willing to sacrifice all. You, you have to be willing to sacrifice. You have to be willing to do what's necessary to embrace the message of the kingdom. You, 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 you have to do it. You, you just have to do it. Uh, 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 let, me, let, me use, let me use Paul. Let me use Paul for a moment. Let me, let me use Paul for a moment in, in Philippians. Paul for, came across. Paul, Paul, we understand the apostle Paul, he, he, he murdered the church. He, 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 was a, he was a Jew. He was a, 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 a Jew. He called himself the Jew of the, you know, Hebrew of the Hebrews. He, he, he was well-schooled, well-educated, and he came against the church. But yet Paul says this, and I'm going to read it in, in, the tra in the Passion Translation. It says, yet all of the accomplishments that I once took credit for, I now forsake them. And regard it all as nothing compared to the delight of experiencing Jesus Christ as my Lord. To truly know him meant letting go of everything from my past and throwing all my boasting on the garbage heap. It's all like a pile of manure to me now. So that is, so that I may be enriched in the reality of knowing Jesus Christ and embracing him as Lord in all of his greatness, my passion is to be consumed with him and to, 
and not clinging to my own righteousness based on keeping the written law, my righteousness will be his based on the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, the very righteousness that came that comes from God. What, what Paul says is that that once 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 he came to understand, once he had an encounter with with Jesus Christ and the message of the kingdom, what Paul understood is that I have a lot to be boastful about. I have a lot, uh, 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 my reputation and, and all of that, who I am and all of that, what I've done. I have all of that going for me. But because I came in contact, because I found the, the treasure, because I, I came to uh, 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 find this pearl of great price. I, I'm giving all of that up. I'm giving all of that away. I, I, I don't care if I'm being ridiculed. I, I don't care if I'm, I, 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 I'm, I'm denounced by my, 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 my peers and my family. I, 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 all I know now is that I want to embrace Jesus Christ. I, I, I want to embrace Jesus Christ. I, I, I want, he says, my passion is to be consumed with him. I want to be, I, I, I got a passion. I, I want to be consumed with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It, there, there's an urgency. There's an urgency. There's an urgency. There's a, there's an urgency. There's a, there's an urgency. And, and, and see, see, Peter, Peter was, I mean, I'm sorry, Paul, Paul was more like the one. Paul was more like the one, the man who, who just came across the treasure. He, he really wasn't seeking the treasure. Jesus, Jesus met him on the Damascus road and, and, and he says, uh, uh, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And, and, and so Jesus uh, reveals himself to Paul and, 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 and because once he reveals himself, Paul sees the treasure. He sees the, the value. He, he, he sees and finds out that he's been doing it all wrong. Now he embraces Jesus Christ. And he says, my passion is to be consumed by him. Uh, all of the stuff that I had, I had going for me, I, I put that on the garbage dump. I count that as manure. Because now all I'm concerned with, my, all I'm concerned about, I'm consumed with knowing Christ. It has to be an urgency. There has to be a willing of sacrifice. That, that's what his disciples did. That, that's what his disciples did uh, 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 when he was, he, he, he was walking one day. He was walking one day. He was walking one day. Luke 18 tells us that, 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 that. I'm sorry, uh, Mark, Mark 1 tells us that as, as, he, as he was walking along the, the, the Sea of Galilee, he sees Simon and Andrew, uh, uh, the brother of Simon, casting their, 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 their nets in the sea. And they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately, it says, immediately, that Simon, which, is, which would later become a uh, 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 Paul, Peter, which later would become Peter, uh, immediately left their nets and followed him. Going a little further, uh, um, he saw James, uh, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who was also in the boat, uh, mending the nets. Immediately he called to them, and, and they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired servants and went and followed him. When you come into count to encounter Jesus and the message of the kingdom, it requires immediate action. It, it requires immediate action. It requires immediate action. It requires sacrifice. It, 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 Jesus, Jesus is, 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 is asking us to, 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 to leave all, to forsake all for the sake of him. But, but he tells us forsaking all and leaving all is worth it. it, it forsaking all and, and leaving all is, is worth it. I, I'm, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Oh, I, 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 I'm almost done. I, I'm not going to keep you much longer. Uh, here we go. Uh, here, here's the message. Here, here's the message. Um, Luke, 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 <coughs> Luke 18 says, 
Peter says, he says, behold, we have left uh, our homes and followed you. And he said to them, truly, I say unto you, there is no one who has left a house or a wife or a brother or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God who will not receive many times as much at the time, at this time, and and the age to come eternal life. What, what Jesus is just saying, nobody has forsaken all of the stuff that they have left, and they won't receive so much more in this life and in the life to come. That, that's what he's saying. That, that's what he's saying. He, he, he's saying, he's saying uh, the kingdom, the kingdom is of such, is so valuable that no matter what you leave behind, you're going to get that plus some. You're going to get that plus some. You, you, need to, you need to just put that in the comment. I'm going to get that plus some. I, I, I'm going to get that plus some because this pearl is great. Th this pearl was of great value. Uh, uh, the, the, the pearl, the pearl, the pearl is, is the message of the kingdom. It is the word of God. It's, it, it's the, the message of the kingdom. It's the word of God. And the word of God is, is valuable. It, it, it's so valuable. It's so valuable. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to a close. I'm coming to the close. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to the close. I, I, I talked about the kingdom. I, I talked about the, the, the merchant. And here's the pearl. The pearl is the word of God. It's the message. It's the message of the kingdom. Uh, let, look, look I, I like this verse. I love this verse. Psalm 19, uh, starting at verse 7. It says the word of God. I'm reading this in the Passion uh, 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 translation. It says the, God's word is perfect in every way, how it revives our souls. His, law, his laws lead us to truth, and his ways change the simple to wise. His teaching makes us joyful and radiant uh, his light, and radiate his light. His precepts are so pure. His commands, how they challenge us to keep close to our heart. The revelation light of his word makes my spirit uh, shine radiantly, radiantly. Every one of the Lord's commands is right. Follow them. Following them brings cheer. Nothing he says ever needs to be changed. The rarest treasures of life are found in his truth. That's why I prize God's word like others prize fine gold. Nothing brings the soul such sweetness as seeking his living word. For they warn us, his servants, and keeps us from following the wicked ways given a lifetime guarantee, great success to every obedient soul. Look, the word of God is it, it, good. It's just good. The, the, the commandment and his statutes are pure. They're, they're more to be desired than gold, yea, even fine gold. They're sweeter than the honey on the honeycomb. I don't care what you're looking for. You could be looking for a lot of things right now, but if you embrace the message of the kingdom and the word of God, you, you, the word of God tells us that not only, not only in following uh, 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 his word will keep you, but it also brings you into a place of success. I, I'm going to share this and I'm going to be done. I promise you I'm going to be done. I'm going to wrap it up here, right here, right here. Uh, I, I, I just want to tell you, I want to tell you in these evil days that we're living in, in these last days that we're living in, what we need to embrace right now is the message of the kingdom. We, we need to embrace it, embrace it now more than ever. See, the message, see, there's a whole lot going on in the land. There's anxiety in the land. There, there's wickedness in the land. There's evil in the land. There's death in the land. There's suffering in the land. There's oppression in the land. And all of this wasn't, is, is not new. Uh, this was going on at the same time uh, Jesus was in the land. But what the message of the kingdom brought such hope to all of those who embraced it. The, what, what we got to understand is the joy for the joy of the, of the kingdom. It's worth giving 
all to him. It's, it's worth giving your life. It's worth leaving behind all the unnecessary stuff because it is in the pursuit of the kingdom that we find that God adds all things unto us. Jesus says, look, why are you worried? Why are you worried? Why are you worried? Why, why, are you so, why, why are you so worried? Why are you filled with anxiety? Why are you going through all of the stuff that you're going through? Uh, the, your heavenly father knows that you need all of that stuff. Eating and drinking, that's not what it's all about. Eating and drinking is not what it's all about. The Father knows that you need uh, those type of things. It's, it's, the, it's the Gentiles. It's the unbelievers who worry, who's complaining, who's upset, who's scared. It, it's them. It's those people who ought to be worried. It's those people who ought to be scared. It's those people who ought to be depressed. I'm not saying that believers don't go through times of difficulty. Uh, pe the Word of God tells us that if any man would, would live godly, you're going to experience persecution. We all know that. But we, and we know that there's times and moments that all of us have moments where we're not, not on top of things. But, 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 but when we get a moment with the word, when we take our time and, and begin to call out to God, God does something in our spirit. That message, that word of the kingdom, he, he, the king comes and he begins to comfort us. He begins to lift our spirit and begin to lift our burdens and renew our hearts and renew our souls because the word of God is just so good. The message of the kingdom is just so good. You have the opportunity that whatever you have, whatever you're pursuing, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. it won't do for you what the kingdom can do. That's why it's so important to understand the kingdom. That's why Jesus preached the kingdom. He taught the kingdom. He told his disciples to preach and to demonstrate the power of the kingdom. So, I declare to you today, I declare to you today, be like the merchant, be intentional, be urgent, and be willing to sacrifice all for the kingdom because it's worth it. It is absolutely worth it. Let's take a moment and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for this opportunity to share your word. Thank you for this message that you've given us, this message series. The, the kingdom is like. Help us, oh God, in this moment to grasp the, the kingdom message, to get back on point, to understand, oh God, that it's you. You have given us the power and the authority of, to walk in, to live in, the kingdom we bless you oh God for all that you're doing and all that you've done we praise you in this moment we thank you that we're just not a church but we're a kingdom people we're kingdom covenant people we honor you today and we bless you and give you all the glory right now in Jesus name we 